Hey everybody, welcome to the launch of the Logic Pro X Tips channel. Going to be bringing you loads of awesome Logic Pro X content that's going to help improve your workflow, going to make you a more efficient user of Logic Pro X, regardless of the genre that you work in. I thought today, just to give you a flavor of what's to come, I'd give you three quick things that I use all the time when I'm working with drums, particularly when I'm working with a multi-track drum recording. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Tip number one is working with groups when editing in my project. So here's my project. I've got four different tracks on my drums. I've got kick, snare, overheads in stereo, and toms in stereo. Listen to them quickly. Sounds good, sounds fine to me. Now what I wanna do is make them really, really tight, get them really locked in on the grid. So I'm gonna select those four channels in my mixer and group them. I'm gonna put them in group number one, which will pop up over here in my groups menu. And I'll call those drums over there. Now if groups doesn't appear here in your mixer, then you can go to your channel strip component to make sure that you've got group checked there. So you can just right click on the channel there, go to your channel strip components and check group there. Now in this group menu, what you're actually looking for is the drop down that says settings. And this is where you can tell that group what it is that you want it to control. So I don't want the volume to be in that group because when I move the volume, they're all gonna to move together. Similarly, I don't want, uh, for example, the pan to be in that group because if I were to change the pan on one, it would change them all. So I'm gonna uncheck all of these. The two that I do want are editing and quantize locked uh, for the audio, which will give you this little cue that appears on the tracks. Now that cue is really important because it, what it is doing is telling you which tracks it's looking at for transients to then quantize this performance. You can basically select which channels you want it to be looking at for different transient markers to then align to the grid. So I'm gonna take it off of the overheads and just leave it on the kick, snare and toms because there's this tom fill at the end. Now I can close my mixer, I can close my groups menu over here. Now what I'm gonna do is turn on my flex. So flex editing is up here, turn it on, and you'll see because they're grouped together in an editing group, it's gonna turn them all on simultaneously. Slicing is the one that we're looking for. Now let's have a listen, and let's think about the rhythmic value that we're gonna to want to quantize to. Right, so a 16th note is gonna work absolutely fine there. You've got those tom fills do -go -do -go -do -go, and the snares in the middle. They're all a 16th, so I'm gonna select them, go up here to my quantize and hit 16th and boom, quantizes it all straight away. Now I will always go through and manually check that a couple of bars at a time, just in case there have been any kind of little glitchy errors, which quite often creep in. So I'm gonna go through and manually check that. Cool, okay, so quite a few little errors there. So, so all I need to do, if I don't want a transient marker to be there, double click on it and that'll remove it. And I can go and drag markers around and you can see that what it's doing is doing it across all of the channels, not just one channel, but it does it across all four because they're in this group over here where the editing is happening to everything. Cool, so I'm done. Easy as that, just to move a few transients around, get everything beautifully on the grid. Let's check that all the way through. Perfect. So that's tip number one, grouping and editing things together. Now, often what you then do is 
go to bounce in place those things and bounce them out one at a time, I've got a much shorter and quicker way of doing it. All I'm gonna do is find a nice bit of space in my track here, split by playhead, so Command T to split them into two regions, and then I'm just gonna highlight those two regions and hit J for join, and what that'll do is commit all of that editing into a new audio region. So here it is, it says, do you wanna create a new audio region? Yes, please, I do. It rifles through those and it's committed those to new regions. So my flexing is done and I can now turn off my flex editing. Beautiful, how about that? Now, tip number three is that I'm gonna do some drum replacement in order to enhance this kit sound. So I'm gonna turn my group off now. So I can go into my groups menu and just uncheck it there so that it's grayed out on the channels, meaning that I can now edit these things individually again. If I ever, if I ever want to edit them together again, I can just go back into my groups menu and recheck it there, just turn it back on. But let's leave it off now. And I'm going to go to track and I'm going to look to replace or double a drum track. So I've selected my drum track here. I'm going to track, replace or double. And what it'll do is to analyze this by the transient peaks and put a MIDI note exactly on each of those transient peaks. So I'm gonna tell it that it's a kick. I want it to double rather than replace. If you selected replace, it would basically just mute the other region, but I still want the natural drum, so I'm gonna hit double. And then you've got this threshold where it'll basically look at the information that's there and decide how sensitively it needs to apply those MIDI notes to the transients. So what I wanna do is look through here and see if it's roughly putting uh, a MIDI note on each of my transient hits. So let's have a little listen, we can preview it. Okay, so I don't need that little one in here, so let's pull the threshold up just a little bit and there, it, there it's gone. Beautiful, okay, love that. And there we go, there's my kick trigger. Now the great thing about that is that I can then put any kick sample I want onto that channel. So let me just solo it out and it gives you loads of options here straight away. Cool, let's do exactly the same with our snare. So select our snare, track, replace or double. It's gonna be a snare, I want it to double. And let's look at the threshold. Let's go with a little preview here. Cool, let's go with that, hit OK. Now I can always go in and manually tweak this about as well. So let's say it's identified here, these last two MIDI notes that shouldn't be there, I can go in and I can just mute them or I could delete them. I can equally go in and change the velocity of these notes to make them all a bit louder. So I can just treat them like any MIDI. And similarly, as we did before, you can go in and change the particular patch if you want. So there you go, there are three really quick tips for upping your game with your drum editing. We're talking about grouping your drum tracks together. We're talking about joining them and committing those edits to new regions really quickly. And we're talking about drum replacement. There's gonna be loads of great content coming for you for free on this channel, Logic Pro X Tips. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit like, and I'll see you in the next video very soon.